The UK has set an ambitious legally binding target to reduce net greenhouse gas emissions that arise from UK-based activities to zero by 2050. Since 1990, UK-based greenhouse gas emissions have fallen by around two-fifths, even as the economy and population has grown. This is a faster per capita reduction than in any other G7 country. However, the extent to which emissions have fallen depends on exactly how we measure greenhouse gas emissions. The UK's net zero target is measured based on emissions produced in the UK, but the UK consumes more emissions than it produces. It is a net importer of products that embed greenhouse gas. If and when the UK reaches its net zero target, therefore, UK consumption emissions are likely to remain positive. So where has this reduction in territorial emissions come from? Over half the reduction came from the energy generation sector. Electricity is now much cleaner than it was 30 years ago. Other sectors which have seen significant reductions include industrial processes and waste management. Emissions from agriculture and residential and business properties, largely from gas heating, have fallen considerably less since 1990. Looking forward, the transport sector poses a major challenge. Land transport, mainly road transport emissions, have been broadly stable since the 1990s and are now the largest source of UK-based emissions. Emissions from aviation and shipping have increased substantially almost entirely due to international aviation emissions, which increased by 136% between 1990 and 2018. Meeting the UK's climate goals will entail significant costs for households. A key question is how these costs will be shared between different types of households. Our research shows that the carbon footprints of the richest tenth of households are, on average, almost three times larger than those of the poorest tenth of households. This is driven by richer households consuming more vehicle fuel, air transport and leisure goods and services. For example, richer households' emissions from air transport are around nine times greater than those for poorer households. However, the spending of poorer households is more carbon intensive, meaning more emissions are associated with each pound they spend. This means they'll be more affected by policies that increase the cost of emissions. To reach net zero, many economists argue that we should impose a tax on greenhouse gas emissions. The UK does have a large number of policies that, both implicitly and explicitly, increase the cost of emissions. However, these policies are often inconsistent, imposing very different prices on different forms of greenhouse gas emissions and different groups of users. For example, while government currently taxes household electricity consumption, household gas consumption is effectively subsidised as a result of a VAT discount on domestic bills. Inconsistencies of this kind generate inefficiency by failing to prioritise the lowest cost opportunities to limit emissions. Ultimately, climate change is a global challenge. The UK therefore needs to ensure that policy doesn't simply drive emissions overseas, making international cooperation a vital part of future progress. It's likely that the most challenging phase of the UK's progress towards net zero is yet to come. The UK has made good progress in reducing emissions in recent decades, at least compared to other similar countries, but there is still lots of work to be done, particularly in areas like transport and agriculture. And without a more consistent approach to carbon pricing, the UK risks paying a higher price for net zero than it needs to. This research is part of the IFS Green Budget, produced in partnership with City and funded by the Nuffield Foundation. To learn more about the challenge of reaching net zero and the issues facing the economy more broadly, visit www.ifs.org.uk forward slash green budget.